going to be hot again today and hot through the week and hot through the month and hot through next month and hot through the month after that. And maybe it cools off a little bit in October and then maybe around Halloween we'll get a cold front. Senator Bill Cassidy, I have just covered the weather for the entire, what, three and a half months? <laughs> Tommy, you left out a little bit of rain. When, when rain well, I forgot. You're right. I forgot. Thank you, sir. Rain probably uh, every afternoon or so. Uh, and let's hope. Let's hope you fittingly left out a hurricane. So that's I, what we really don't want to hear. Left out a hurricane and left out so much rain that it, you ready for this, Senator? That it floods people's houses, <laughs> which brings us to why you're here. Tell us about the flood insurance program, about people who want to privatize it, about the sustainability of it, et cetera, et cetera. Well, first, we're working to make this affordable and sustainable and accountable. Mm -hmm. So there's been some going back and forth. There's some folks who'd like to effectively kill the program. Uh, Scalise did a great job on the House side. We've extended the uh, period of the current law for four months. Uh, we've been working on this on the Senate side, and then Steve was able to pull it off on the House side. So, so we have, if you will, more time to work on reforms. And that was pretty can, big because, I'm sorry, sir, because the House is going to take a break, right, and the Senate's not? You're correct. Yeah. Correct. And the deadline was the 31st of this month. Uh, um, I and Kennedy have worked in a, a fair number of ways to extend current law, but it wasn't quite happening. So the fact that the House was able to send us something that extends current law, I know that's a lot of process, but suffice it to say that people are okay for four months while we continue to work out reforms that, again, make it more affordable, more accountable, and uh, more sustainable. How do you do that without pricing people out of it because it almost seems as though actuarially everybody either has to buy it so now you're talking about an individual mandate with flood insurance or um, it's going to be extremely expensive for those where it is prone to flooding first um, in, in the bill that i put forward with uh, kirsten gillibrand a senator from new york we have 400 million dollars a year that goes to flood mitigation uh, now, now to put that in perspective, there's been about $200 million total put forward so far. We will put four, $400 million a year so the communities can become more resilient. So that Secondly, would mean, you, Senator, I'm sorry, raising houses or? A couple of different things. One, for example, completing the Comey Diversion Canal in East Baton Rouge Pit will make those communities more resilient. Mm -hmm. In other cases, it would be raising homes. Uh, but but it'll depend upon you know the local circumstances. Right. But still, the point is that you can a stitch in time saves not. Sure. Secondly, you, you mentioned privatization. If we allowed some privatization, um, studies show that 60 percent of those in Louisiana could pay lower rates. Why? Because the FEMA program is so slow in adapting to two, to, to new flood maps. If you, live behind, if you live behind a recently completed levy, you're still paying higher rates because FEMA has not yet taken into account your recently completed levy. So, so that's something else we do to make it more affordable. Um, you mentioned uh, folks buying the insurance. It actually is already mandated that if you live in a flood zone, you're supposed to buy insurance. So that's nothing new. And we in Louisiana actually do it at a higher percentage relative to anybody else in the nation. In terms uh, but of – I'm sorry, ahead. Senator. Well, no, I was just going to ask you in terms of, uh, I think, uh, 60 Minutes did a piece or Jeff Glor with the CBS News about a firm that happened to be in Metairie. And, and I believe, if I got this straight, they were hired by FEMA to try to um, negotiate down people on their flood claim settlements. Is there anything being looked at as far as that goes? Absolutely. In the Cassidy Gillibrand bill, we have consumer protections so that folks um, don't have to produce all their documents uh, when they're in the middle of recovering from a flood uh, within a certain time period. There's more latitude there. There's more protections against uh, fraudulent engineering firms. And there's more, if you will, redress, the ability to come back at those that would attempt to defraud uh, someone who's recently flooded. So what do you think the – first off, I applaud your efforts for uh, spearheading whatever you want to call it, engaging in a bipartisan effort with Senator Gilderbrand because it's it's so hard to get together on anything on a partisan basis now, is it not? It is, but on the other hand, I tell folks that floods are neither Republican nor Democrat. Mm -hmm. They are American. 
And if you look at what we have in our bill, it doesn't matter what party you're in in Louisiana. You're going to sit there and say, oh, yeah, I need consumer protections. Oh, yes, we need to uh, do something to lower rates. For example, um, uh, Senator Gillibrand was a little nervous about some of the stuff we had in terms of how you could decrease the government's cost of borrowing. Uh, To put that in perspective, uh, um, a a bill that I had put in when I was a member of Congress allows FEMA to – take the risk from the flood insurance program and to buy reinsurance. That purchase of reinsurance this year, this past year, saved the federal taxpayer several hundred million dollars. Now we're putting in another system where they can continue to do that but lower their cost of borrowing. And so she was uncomfortable. Then she realized, oh, yeah, this would work. So we're saving the taxpayer money uh, in two different ways, cost of borrowing and the ability to offload risk. Senator, I appreciate your time. Anything we're missing you want to add? No, we're just working, making it sustainable, making it affordable, making it accountable. We think we're going to get there, Tommy. Along those lines, you're all going to stay in session throughout the summer? Uh, We're certainly going to stay in through most of August, and that's uh, different. But uh, President Trump's got all these appointments. The other side of the aisle hates Trump. So whatever Trump puts up an appointment, they want to block the appointment. We spend 30 hours debating people who are not controversial. So if we have to stay through August to get some of these folks through – Uh, to help the administration complete their work. We're going to stay through August. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. I appreciate your time. You too, Tommy. Senior Senator from Louisiana, Senator Bill Cassidy, Dr. Bill Cassidy.